Hello, this is Bry. I'm the author of HTML5 Shoot Em Up in an Afternoon. And uh, it's around 2 a.m. in the morning here in Manila. I just came home from a party and I did a quick check. Wasn't it? I, I couldn't sleep and so I just checked around and I saw that the book. It's just broken the top 100 of the lifetime number of copies sold or lifetime number of downloads. Not really copies sold because the free downloads are already counted and not a lot of people really bought the book at full price. Anyway, uh, since I just I saw this, I decided I can't sleep. I drank enough alcohol in the party to speak English. And say so what the heck, so why not just create a video series, a video walkthrough of the book uh, to say my thanks to the readers. So I'm, plan I'm planning to make a more professional, <laughs> more uh, a decent uh, video series for this one, but it's going to take some time might have some time next week probably not might have some time in january or maybe not but for this just do a simple casual walkthrough of the book so i'm going to spend a couple of hours here going through the book and yeah so to start off we're not going to go through this preparing for the afternoon the, the intro uh the intro chapters i think i can make a 15 a decent 15 minute video 15 20 minute video for both of those so for this casual run through we'll just skip directly to afternoon zero okay so afternoon zero overview of the starting code so at this point you should have your you should have mongo set up and it should be pointing to the location of the source code so right here we have the source code i downloaded it i extracted it it's here and i set up a web server which is mongoose to point at it and uh, here it is it's working if i click it there and you should have uh, sublime text or whatever editor you have open on that folder okay okay so let's start with the run through so this template you downloaded and extracted it's based on the basic game template of the official Facer repository. So if you go to Facer, there's the resources folder there. The resources, got a bunch of resources there. And we got the project templates in the project templates folder. And our template is based on that template. So you got your different states. Uh, you have your uh, game state and you have your page that will load all of them. But in addition, we also have our assets. And usually when you're going to start making a project, that's going to be the part that's going to take a lot of time to, uh, that's going to take, waste a lot of time. But for us, well, that's already prepared. I got uh, sprites from Sprite Lib. It's open source. Also the open game art sounds from o OGA. Uh, from this guy it's there yeah so you don't really have to look for other assets and we can go directly to the game itself anyway so just a quick run through uh, app.js it's what uh, runs the app so it loads all the states and you've got your different states boot initial state sets up the additional settings so 
all the settings are here and if you load it this is set how many max pointers are there if you want multi-touch you can set it to two and set the scale if you're mobile i set the mobile to automatically scale to 1024 by 768 and uh, scaling horizontally and vertically and next is the preloader it preloads all the assets and the important thing about the preloading is if you don't have a preloader the game might uh, if you create a game on a different framework or whatever and don't have a preloader it's usually going to stop when it's loading because yeah and the the game has to load the assets but in phaser you got a preloader the assets are loaded before everything you're expected to load everything before the game starts and your main menu uh, the main menu you can see is that here if you start it so you saw a flicker of the preloader which loads all the assets since it's local it's quick and here is yeah uh, yet another world war ii shooter this is the main menu so that tap z to start this where this and finally the game where we will do everything that's there anyway that's that um yeah so let's actually begin so if for the whole tutorial let's set some standards uh the sample code that is in boldface are the sample code that you have to insert at that location and code that has strike through are code that you will have to delete so, so in this case uh, the boldface may be hard to read especially if you're using the html version but yeah it, it's uh it's a certain problem with the uh, uh, publishing in lean pub and we can't really do anything about it just squint you might probably see it properly anyway so yeah let's start let's modify game.js this is the first modification that we're going to do modify game.js to make the background scroll vertically so here the map the background is still not scrolling it's not moving so let's modify the code so first let's remove the update honestly remove that uh, I'm using uh, sublime text I'm not used to using sublime text I'm used to using vim but I'm using vim uh, the vintage mode so if I do crazy stuff here and doesn't work in Sublime Text, it's uh, the fault of Sublime Text. Anyway, so yeah, we insert that, we delete that, then we insert the new line. So yeah, save that and. Uh, so it's now scrolling down so that's the basic uh, the basic thing about the code examples if it's boldface insert if it's strike through delete it there will be cases there will be line numbers to guide you uh, sometimes there won't be anyway you, you'll figure that out and before we move on, one last thing before I proceed, um, avoid copy pasting. If you're not, well, you're not really, not sure what to say, if you're not a master, you're not, I'm not saying professional, if you're not really good at JavaScript, or you haven't done a lot of JavaScript lately, or haven't done any coding lately, I would suggest you not copy paste especially if you're using this opportunity to learn programming or to improve your programming skills because if you're copy pasting all of these codes you might not get errors and if you don't get errors unlike 
say me who has been programming for a quite long time if you're not um uh, experience you haven't experienced uh a just uh typos and all that you haven't experienced much of that uh you're not going to learn as quickly as you would have uh, if you didn't copy paste so yeah if you're if you're a master javascript programmer and just want to try it facer facer sure go ahead uh do the copy paste thing but if you're a beginner or somewhere intermediate, I would suggest that you or you just type everything. Anyway, so that's for the code. Let's proceed to the other part. So yeah, if you noticed before, I had to... So there's a motorcycle outside. <laughs> We're not going to stop for motorcycles or planes or uh, roosters crowing outside and saying that it's near dawn. Anyway, uh, let's move on to the next. So you notice that we changed the code. So we changed the code here, saved it, and after saving it, we had to refresh. And after refreshing, we had to go through the preloader, the main menu, and clicking it, we see this. So instead of going through that three stages, we want to go directly to the game state. So to do that, we are just going to skip everything in the app.js. So instead of starting at the boot and the start, we're going to start the game at the game. And this Again, we're going to skip the preloader so we don't have the assets and it's a good thing because uh, without the asset preloading we can go through in this tutorial how you can load your assets anyway so let's just do it app.js so I can copy paste because if I'm going to type all this might uh, go beyond 6 a.m. so replace this with game Come on, Vim. <laughs> and uh, yeah, we replace, insert the preload. Preloader background asset to game.js because game.js doesn't have preload, we're going to add the preload. So you'd see a problem with the copy paste is that it's not going to be formatted correctly. And you're going to have to do the space base, but and yeah, let's align it there. But if you really want to do the copy paste, I would suggest that you're going to not use the PDF and go directly to the book in the HTML. So let's just do that. And uh, let's start with over. So here you can't really see what the the call this the insert because it's not pretty obvious. It's not obvious in the HTML. In the PDF, it's a lot easier to see but the problem with the pdf is you can't really copy paste it properly and i want to copy paste it. anyway let's do some funky html stuff right so that we can also see properly okay so sprite position then if we copy this then instead of doing that we copy this what would happen here is if i do this it's going to copy it properly anyway back to the thing so it's this is save if we refresh the page it goes directly but uh, the problem again, we skip the boot. The boot sets the screen to horizontal. 
So there's no there's no horizontal alignment here. Anyway, that's that part. And finally, we have another thing here before we close out this first chapter. First 15 minutes is that uh, Phaser automatically uses whether it's going to use WebGL if your browser supports WebGL graphics acceleration for your browser or it's going to fall back to Canvas. So here I'm using a virtual machine, a virtual box, and I've already enabled 3D here, but it's not going to be that powerful. It might stutter later. I this is practically the first time I use it, this setup. But if I experience stutters later, I can easily change the behavior. Because if I look at the console, it's using WebGL. If I want the setting to go to Canvas, I can simply replace auto with Canvas at app.js. And let's do that bit. Uh, so I'm using uh, unregistered sublime text. We're going to see that a lot later. And if I refresh this, it's now using Canvas. But for us, I'm going to try to use WebGL as much as possible. So, yeah. And I'm just going to zoom this in. Yeah, that should be enough. Anyway, I think that's that. Anyway, that's that for this afternoon zero. Going to take a quick break and read it and start recording the first main chapter, which is sprites, the game loop, and basic physics.